Tonight, workers get a pay rise, but the ACTU is not happy. More Laurie Connell bombshells hit Parliament in Canberra. And Mikhail Gorbachev's historic visit to Japan to patch up... Good evening, Richard Moorcroft with ABC News. The National Wage Bench has awarded workers a 2.5% pay rise, but the increase is not automatic. Key elements of the ACTU's claim rejected, including the crucial issue of enterprise bargaining. And industrial reporter Cathy Boland says that will put pressure on the union's accord with the government. It's been 20 months since Australia's 8.4 million workers were awarded a pay rise, and the ACTU was left wondering whether it had been worth the wait. The ACTU believes that it's an extremely tough decision. It's not a decision about which we will be doing somersaults in Swanson Street. Today's judgment gives Australian workers a 2.5% pay rise. For a worker on average weekly earnings, that's an increase of $13.89 before tax. But a detailed inspection of the fine print revealed unions have to apply for the pay rise, which means some workers may have to wait over a year for the increase. Employers are pleased. And what we have here is a decision which could be a very major decision of benefit to the Australian economy. A claim for an extra 3% in superannuation was rejected. The full bench wants the government to set up a national conference on the issue. But the powerful metal workers union has called on the government to legislate for an increase in superannuation. The commission also rejected the ACTU claim for extra pay rises based on proven increases in productivity. Unions and employers had been hoping for guidance on bargaining at the workplace level. But the centralised system will remain. The Commission says the parties aren't mature enough to be given that power. When the wage case first began, the ACTU described its claim as a package which must be implemented in full. However, three of the four key elements of the claim have not been granted. The ACTU says it must talk to affiliates before it decides whether it will accept the decision. A key element of those discussions will be the future of the Accord. I'm uh, a bit disappointed that the Accord, in full, get uh, supported by the bench. The question of the Accord is really a matter. Nothing's got a future if you can't deliver it. Workers will be wondering if there's any point to an agreement which delivers a 2.5% pay rise when inflation is run 7%. More money in pay packets is welcome news for the retail industry, where figures today show the recession continues to deepen. Economics correspondent, Walter Hamilton. Stores without customers of Ponfil, competing in this event for the first time. But the biggest cheers were reserved for 83-year-old local hero Johnny Kelly running his 60th Boston Marathon. After nearly six hours on the road, he literally fell across the finish line and into the arms of his wife. A great finish. <laughs> How's the weather going to be after that, Mike? It's, uh, it's going to be uh, a mixed bag for the next 24 hours. A chance of a little bit of rain, but not too much. That chance won't be affecting the city, though there was a little rain in the past 24 hours. The falls to nine this morning, less than one millimetre, so hardly worth mentioning, except for the fact that it has been very dry this year. 0.4 of a millimetre in a couple of suburbs, and the temperatures today just a little down on the average for this time of year. Top of 21 near the coast, 22 or 20 inland after a cool start. Environmental matters and first ultraviolet radiation, which peaked in the moderate range of the scale today. 2.6 was the maximum reading. On to air pollution. That remained low, but it is expected to move up to medium tomorrow, with the first high tide of the day at 5 to 10, and that's 1.4 metres. Sydney at the moment has clear skies, and we are heading into a rather nippy sort of a night. The temperature, 18 degrees, and that's one down on the average. Relative humidity, 52%. The wind, light east-nor'easter, and the pressure is steady. Now to the port tomorrow and an early fog patch or two possible ahead of another mostly sunny day. Light to moderate southwest to southeasterly winds with temperatures to 23 on the coast and one or two higher inland. Around New South Wales today, the temperatures were close to the average, again after a rather cool start. Most centres, and that trend looks like being repeated tomorrow. Not much rain to talk about, a little up in that northeastern corner, and that's where it's likely to fall again tomorrow. Seven millimetres at Mwilumba was the top to nine this morning. Mwilumba also had 0.4 of a millimetre in the six hours, nine to three, and one or two patches of rain further south along the coast. For tomorrow, temperatures not showing much change on the levels achieved today. The air mass will become slightly milder by day over the next day or two, but the nights are going to remain rather nippy. 
Light southwest to southeasterly winds for New South Wales tomorrow, continuing dry over the inland, just an isolated shower in that northeast corner, and then clearing. It'll be mostly for most of the state. Satellite picture tonight is showing very little cloud through the state, just a little evidence of it up in the northeastern corner, and that's where that shower or two is likely. Behind that, not much to report at all. Some rather cool air down in the Great Australian Bight and the pressure systems, well, none to talk about, and that's a very strong high. It's slow moving, and it's really going to dominate things for the next few days for New South Wales. The prognostic chart for tomorrow shows it's still in a position to give an onshore wind flow up in the northeastern corner, enhancing a chance of those showers, but for the rest of New South Wales, light winds, and that does point to continued cold nights followed by cool to mild, even warm days toward the end of the week as the high moves it further east and the wind, ma uh, wind conditions tend around from the north. Well, for tomorrow in Sydney, top of 23 degrees, mostly sunny, and gradually becoming a little milder toward the end of the week. Richard. Thanks very much, Mike. Time for another quick look at tonight's main stories. The ACTU says it will have to rethink its commitment to the wages system after its key claims were rejected by the Industrial Relations Commission. Workers were awarded a 2.5% rise. Laurie Connell has told the WA Inc. inquiry that the Prime Minister did give a gold tax commitment in 1987. He also claimed he gave $100,000 to the Liberals in the same year. And Foreign Minister Gareth Evans has expressed dismay at the European communities to ease sanctions against South Africa. And that's the news to this minute. Stay with us now for the 7.30 report. Don't forget Lateline tonight at half past ten. I'll see you tomorrow evening. Good night.